Dr. Papakwesi Indum started full-time work after obtaining his bachelor's degree in December 1975 as a life insurance underwriter with Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, USA. Prior to that, he worked a number of part-time jobs for companies like a food canning and meat processing factories and also as a parking lot attendant. These part-time jobs helped him fund his university education. This is how Dr. Indu learned to value work and understand the importance of having a good work ethic. Uh, my attitude, the principles that I carry in terms of work from having to start off from the very bottom, go and sit in a parking lot and sit there after my studies, after classes in college and collect 25 cents for every car that comes in, 25 cents for every car that comes in and sit there until nearly midnight and account for the monies collected and then wait until the end of every week to get my paycheck. And then I um, had the opportunity uh, through an Egyptian friend to work third shift. When they say third shift in America, the first shift is usually from eight to four or five in the morning. Then the second shift will go from four or five uh, until midnight. And the third shift will go from around midnight until the morning. So I did the third shift and the second shift sometimes. Uh, so if you can imagine, you go to school, you come home, uh, then you go for the second shift and then you come home you come home near midnight and you have to cook and eat something before you go to bed. Or you go to the third shift and I worked at a, at a meat factory learning how to cut different good cuts of meat. And then at the end of our shift, then some of the bad cuts, then you get the chance to pick a little bit of it uh, to take home with you uh, and then go and cook a meal. And if you work on a third shift, which means that we get off work around four or five, uh, sometimes seven in the morning, and I come home, eat something, uh, take a bath, and then go for lectures. That experience of having to do that, even when it's so cold, uh, that sometimes you can even cry standing outside waiting for a bus to take you to school or to, to take you to work. Those kinds of things, that experience of having to find my own way, having to pay my own way, having to rely on myself, that is what has brought me what sometimes I call the culture of work, work ethic discipline. Dr. Papakwesi Indum worked at Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewage District. In 1981, Dr. Indum joined Deloitte & Touche, then Touche Ross, as an associate consultant at the Milwaukee office. He rose rapidly through the ranks. Dr. Indum became one of five blacks in a group of over a thousand people who were partners in 1986. The experience of first Touche Ross and then Deloitte and Touche um, is a life-changing one, uh, a transformational one, one that carried me from, oh yes, you've got an education, oh yes, you can work, oh yes, you can have some discipline and people can trust you uh, to sit there and do good work. To now, you are having an opportunity with a global company where 
professionalism is important. Where being part of a team and working to the highest level was important. And so here I was, um, as African as, as I am, with the name that I have, uh, in a city with the vast majority of the people being uh, white Americans, and in a community where uh, black professionals were few, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, I had to decide that having been given that opportunity to join Deloitte as a management consulting professional, that I had to make the best of it. And so whatever it took, I would carry the bags of the partners. I will carry the papers. I will sit there until midnight and do the work, and do the detail work, learn new things, go wherever they wanted me to go, travel on the weekends, um, but get the work done and make sure that my partners look good, that the people I reported to, that they didn't have any cause, any cause to worry about my loyalty, about hard work, and the willingness and ability to learn new things and to make my partners become good performers and make the company profitable. Um, and so, with any new thing that came, I was there. When we had to travel, wherever it is in America or to other parts of the world, I was there and ready to learn new things. And so, as a management consultant, I went to all the training sessions, I learned the new things, and with our clients, sat there and did things in conjunction with client personnel to deliver the best professional services that I could so that when they looked at me that they wouldn't be seeing an African, they wouldn't be seeing a black face, that they wouldn't be seeing somebody whom they might object to because I didn't fit in within their culture, but that they, they saw a professional who was there and worked to help their organization, whether it was a company like American Motors um, or a public sector organization like Milwaukee County or the state of New Jersey or any one of them, um, that I did the best and, and could be, if you were put in the category of the best that anybody uh, can provide so that they will disregard anything that will bring any prejudice. So being the best that was available, making myself uh, some, somebody that people couldn't do without, that for me is what did it so that I would move up rapidly from associate consultant to senior consultant to manager and eventually as partner and shareholder of one of the best professional services firms in the world in a period of five years. To be the top of my profession, it was sacrifice, hard work, doing whatever it took, and being the best in my profession. Back in Ghana, Dr. Indum helped to combine local accounting firms to become Deloitte and Touche Ghana. He started Deloitte and Touche West Africa Consulting and was the managing partner. In the year 2000, he was elected as chairman of Deloitte and Touche in the Africa region. Deloitte and Touche West Africa Consulting had over 80 professionals based in Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, Liberia, Guinea, and worked in Africa. Middle East and the USA. Major clients of the firm included Ashanti Goldfields Company, African Development Bank, Texaco, Elf Oil, African Reinsurance, the Zimbabwe National Social Security Authority, Ghana Telecom, Nestle, Unilever, Japan Motors, 
and Ghana Bauxite Company. Some major achievements of Deloitte and Touche Africa was the implementation of high-tech for the Ashanti Gold Company Limited. It also developed and implemented the social security system for Zimbabwe and also the implementation of business process re-engineering at the Africa Development Bank. The firm also brought back to Africa more than a hundred African professionals with experience to work and share their experience with others. Today, they play leading roles in the private sector, government and politics, especially in West Africa. Throughout Dr. Indum's association with Deloitte and Touche Consulting West Africa, the procedure was to think global and act local by using best practice, world-class methods and procedures. This is what allowed Deloitte and Touche Consulting West Africa to compete with other world-class firms and attract consulting assignments from both local and multinational companies. Teamwork was always an important factor in the company policy, thus family outings, dinners and annual conferences generally promoted the importance of winning as part of a team than as an individual accomplishment. Coming back to, to Ghana, bringing Deloitte to Ghana, um, it was not a simple proposition. Because I remember the first day that I mentioned this to one of our senior partners. And the partners thought I was crazy. They said, who is this guy? I mean, we're doing all right here. Even at that time, many of the partners in, in the US didn't even want to travel to Europe to do consulting work in Europe. And here I was, a partner in the firm, and I was asking permission to go to Africa to come to Ghana specifically and look for consulting assignments. <laughs> they hadn't heard that before. That who would give this up to go to uncharted territory um, and do something that people thought was crazy? Um, but there was a Nigerian man, Mr. Akintola Williams, and he came to see me sitting in the office in the US and said, hey, young man, what are you doing here? You are needed back home. And he pestered me for two or three years. And my father also, who had always said, I don't care what you do in America or wherever it is. If, if you haven't done something good in your own country, you haven't accomplished anything. So I took the challenge, took some savings and tried to find some Ghanaians, some professionals in the US and say, let's go back to Africa. Let's go to Ghana. And we came. So there are people um, here in Ghana, family members, friends, associates, who were wondering, well, have you done something wrong in America? Why would you want to come here? When we are struggling in Ghana, and you know how Ghana was in the late um, 1980s to the early 90s. Yes, it's a difficult transition. It was a risky thing to do. Um, many people didn't support it, but we felt we were doing the right things with support from my family um, and with support from my partners back in the US, Deloitte, so that I could train our people so we can have the best tools and methodologies that was available to them, we were able to make something good happen that will go from place to place, from country to country in Africa, and so that we could create something that today is serving many of them. Dr. Indum, in addition to his university education, holds a certificate in management from Marquette University, a certificate in insurance from the Life Office Management Institute in the USA and is a certified management consultant of the Institute of Management Consultants, Washington, D.C.